Hey you guys, it's Mathel here once again with the follow-up video for the end game of the cast on crit, which turned out to be completely bow, reap, and bladefall build. Um, I did play it for another day as lancing steel and a sword setup, but I went ahead and decided to try out the bow variant again, and to do that I needed to craft a bow that was competitive with my sword. Once I did that, and then started trying out some bow skills, um, specifically Rain of Arrows and Blast Rain, I was convinced that it was a superior just playstyle for this character overall, and uh, ditched the sword side of things. You can still do the Lancing Steel, and I still did it up to level 90 two and a half or something like that and uh, basically took on plenty of endgame and it's still very solid but overall I think the bow variant was just smoother uh, Reign of Arrows just lets you like point anywhere on the screen and obliterate things and then Blast Rain feels like it procs immensely um, smoothly uh, throughout boss fights and um, various endgame encounters so generally for mapping I am just using Rain of Arrows and then there's still Bladefall and Reap going everywhere uh, as you can tell and um, then for single target pulling out the Blast Rain as pure single target to get faster thicker procs and we've also still got an Arcanist brand um, Blade Blast happening uh, which I'm really honestly not sure how much it's doing but I kept doing it for every boss just in case uh, as well as that the Wither Totem because of Eternity Shroud, like half our damage is uh, Chaos, something like that. So that's why there's a Wither Totem and the Arcanist brand should in theory be propping, uh, procking a lot of um, Blade Blasts if you're procking a lot of Blade Falls all over the place. Like I said, not sure if it's doing all that much. Uh, it is kind of annoying to set up as well because the Arcanist brand cast time is super fucking slow, so it's usually a pre-fire on some bosses, and as well as that it doesn't last very long. It's like five seconds. So it does help, I think, on some situations, but it's not something you really have to worry about, honestly. If you don't want to play with it, you certainly can avoid it. Um, overall, end up being basically one of the thickest characters uh, in DPS that I've probably ever built, um, which is, I guess, a running theme since last league or the league ago before that was um, bow cast on crit with uh, the Inquisitor, which was just pure wave of conviction and shit. Uh, and this is an example of the build without any Herald of Ash, so you can just see scythes flying around everywhere, which is pretty fucking cool. And ultimately, you don't need Herald of Ash in this build. Uh, I wasn't actually using it for a lot of boss fights, just to have more unreserved mana to cast more things. Um, so anyway, it wasn't a pure bow character to begin with, which is why I didn't have a Asenath's um, hat on for even more procs, like the previous Inquisitor did, and it, it was kind of haphazardly put together, so honestly, if you really wanted to, you could improve a lot upon this sort of character, uh, but the main sort of idea here is just bow, cast on crit, and then using a reap and bladefall. I think that was a really nice combo, and uh, that's both for clear and for single target, and I think I could have comfortably rebuilt the character a bit more um, towards like getting 6k life potentially with a bit less um, DPS uh, and then the Slayer Overleech just would have factored in more if we actually built a bit more thick uh, as well as that you can go much harder on some things like life gain on hit uh, a Watcher Eye with life gain on hit um, from Vitality would have been pretty damn disgusting uh, considering the amount of procs that we had going off, as you'll hopefully see in um, a clip in just a second for some of the uh, boss fights and stuff. So these are like double guardian shaper sort of things. And in general, everything was pretty good. I was still, you know, fairly reliably thick, but with the amount of life that I had, it definitely means that some mobs and enemies damage can outpace the amount that you're getting back. Um, but the concept here is sound enough, I think, and you can probably do it as not just a scion, but, you know, various other ascendancies, Inquisitor, Pathfinder, maybe Elementalist, Occultist, that sort of shit, and, um, this scion in the end was purely Raider and Slayer focused, and many of the times I was thinking I might respec into Pathfinder, uh, sub-ascendancy just to have perma flask sustain, not perma, but better uptime. Um, but it was only really relevant on a few fights. So even like this memory four-way, these guys clumped up together and got killed like instantly. So 
the uh, flasks weren't even a factor in that. So just having full flask uptime was only maybe really relevant on something like Awakener, maybe like a uh, Maven, a feared fight, something like that. But with a Maven, I could manage my flasks. With Awakener, he died pretty much instantly. And the feared, that's where it mostly would have um, helped. But I could basically stumble my way through the feared and a few deaths, no big deal. And I definitely wasn't going to be handling all of them at once uh, on this character anyway. We can't take that type of hits. But yeah, as you can see right here, we can basically start face tanking. Had a bit more life, it would have been a bit more reliable. But with spell suppression, you know, Slayer Overleach, it's uh, pretty good against some of these encounters. And I will actually also mention the uh, Awakener clip at the start of the video is an Awakener 7, not an 8. So I did get excited for my damage. I was like, holy shit, that was really good Awakener damage. And then I was like, wait a second, I don't have a, that last watchstone in. It's only a 7. So it is slightly worse than it, you know, would have otherwise looked. But you can see the Maven damage here definitely holds up to the point where we're maybe at about 10 to 20 million DPS. And the character is probably about 10 to 20 exalts worth of investment, at least um, on my end, making it uh, myself. So I'll show you real quick how I crafted the bow, and then I'll leave you with a feared fight. So just really quickly, uh, the bow that I do have here um, looks pretty damn fat, right? Like it's everything's fairly good on it. But with the right investment, you can make similar sorts of bows very, very reliably. Um, and like I said, the starting capital for this build is probably something like 10 to 20 X because just getting a similar bow uh, reliably will cost you a few exalts in materials. So basically what you're doing is buying a bunch of essences of woe. And in this case, I was doing shrieking essences of woe and then spamming them until you hit a combination with cast on crit. And then if you hit a good prefix, great, you're pretty much done. Uh, but otherwise you kind of want a spare prefix. Um, or just some other good suffixes. It really, it's, it's, you know, there's a lot of different ways you can go with this boat. Mine in particular had a spare prefix and a spare suffix. So it had garbage suffixes and a spare prefix. And basically what you can do then is um, roll a cannot roll caster modifier. Um, let me start that again. A cannot roll attack modifier onto your bow with the crafting bench, which I think is one exalt. So you do that and then you end up exalting it and it has to hit one of these few modifiers uh, plus one to gems which is very good frenzy on kill which is bad percent gain as chaos uh, percent gain as cold sorry um, both of these are pretty damn decent uh, and penetrate with ellie also pretty good uh, considering how little we had so any of those are pretty good results uh, the only real bad one is the frenzy ones and more often than not you are getting a good result and then you got really good prefixes and um, I then go ahead and do prefixes cannot be changed craft and then I hit it with a veiled chaos orb and the veiled chaos orb will then hopefully unveil something decent as a um, suffix and in this case I got crit multi while things are nearby which is pretty decent I uh, could have settled for attack speed crit things like that um, and then crafted whatever else I wanted as suffixes you can keep going with that sort of method um, quite reliably uh, as long as you got a spare suffix and ultimately getting kind of whatever you want as a bow. If you've got enough starting capital, you can pretty typically make just about whatever cast on crit bow you want with the right parameters. It'll just be a little bit of RNG on the high end of crafting, but uh, they are fairly reliable otherwise. And that's all I got to say for that. So that's the entire character. Um, and then for a quiver, I just use scorn essences so you do want to use essences of scorn for a quiver if you're going to do a uh, cast on crit setup because um, it's global crit multi still on the essences whereas if you're rolling for crit multi on the quiver itself it's for attacks only for bow attacks only so uh, essences of scorn are pretty good there uh, and then just craft some frenzy on crit if you want to not be pathfinder and uh, uh raider anymore which i thought i was going to do but i ended up playing raider the entire time so my quiver basically just had crit multi and life in the end definitely some room for min max there but uh the frenzy craft is good if you're doing something that isn't a raider on this side of things uh so yeah that's it and uh you can 
enjoy my feared kill, which was okay. I did end up uh, thinking I got hit by Shaper Slam or some shit, but it was in fact just Chill or one-shotting me. Fair enough. Uh, thank you very much for watching. See you guys next time. Alright, what do we got? 30%, yep. Fair enough. Let's go. I agree with Shit. Apple. Hello. Just couldn't get away, man. <sighs> like, by the time I saw those black balls, they were right on top of me. And I didn't know which direction I was supposed to dodge at that point as well. What happened? What happened? The shape of slam- he looked like he was bugged. Like his animation was bugged and he was- There's no way Chiula just fucking touched me, that's not how it was. Shaper looked like he was doing nothing, which to me indicated he was fucking going for a slam. That's how I got Giga slapped, which makes sense. Cortex copy, he's dead already, dude. What are you on about? Brick shouldn't be. This shit is just a hemorrhage of money every time.